talks a little more about the access control, the process control, the risk management, and the global trade services. These four, as we know now, are the pillars of SAP GRC solution. And the most important one being access control. Now let's see the other modules of access control. As I've told you before, SAP GRC access control is the most widely used solution from GRC for access control. And it has four modules. Number one is access risk analysis, EAM or emergency access management, ARM, which is access request management, and BRM, which is business role management. Access risk analysis helps you to access the risk before the risk actually happens. For example, we have a business user who calls in for a transaction code, which is a financial transaction code XK01. He raises a ticket to the security team for this transaction code to be given to him to carry out certain business functionality. The SAP security and the GRC consultant will use the ARA software and check the conditions, the what if conditions of giving this new they will check if assigning this new XK01 transaction code is going to bring any kind of risk to the already present transaction code, authorization objects, actions and permissions. Are they going to be violated and is an SOD going to result, which is segregation of duties violation is going to result if a particular transaction code is given to this user to carry out a certain functionality. So it gives a clear picture of what is going to happen if we are going to give a certain transaction code or a certain role to a user. It gives the complete confidence to the GRC consultant whether to assign the role or not to assign the role. The second and the most important, second most important uh, module of SAP GRC access control is EAM, which was previously called as Super User Privilege Management. Now it is called Emergency Access Management in the latest version, which is 10.0. The Emergency Access Management, what happens in Emergency Access Management is if we have to do a certain activity, for example, in a, in a month-end activity, we need to perform which is outside our daily activities. So we can do that particular transaction, we can use that particular transaction in a very, very controlled and auditable environment using emergency access management solution from SAP GRC access control. So whatever transaction codes, whatever reasons for which you are going inside the system to carry out certain actions is recorded, documented, and is monitored and the files are sent to the emergency access monitors and controllers. So everything is documented, everything is clear and everything is transparent. So it helps prevent any fraud which might happen when you have more access than what you're supposed to have. The third important module of SAP GRC access control is ARM, which is Access Request Management. Access Request Management is the module which helps the user create the using 
the access request management, which was earlier called as compliant user provisioning in the earlier version, which was 5.3. Now it is called ARM or access request management. It helps to create the workflows inside the system itself. By that, what I mean is prior to GRC, when there was no workflow in place, the GRC consultant or the security consultant, they used to get the request for the user ID creation via a remedy ticket or some other ticketing device. And they used to have the signatures for the approvals uh, in a paper, but right now everything is documented and the workflow is maintained. So when a user ID is going to be created, it is documented, it is approved, it goes to, through the workflow, it gets approved, and finally a user ID is created by the system itself and is documented. So it helps, it reduces the work effort from the security uh, administrative point of view, it reduces the work effort, effort for an auditor, it reduces the cost of managing more people in the security team as this software can do the same thing of user creation. So it is very cost effective and very, very useful. The fourth important thing here is the BRM or the business role management. The BRM or the business role management is helps us in creating the roles in business. I mean, the business roles are created in the system itself using the BRM. So the most important uh, component that we saw now is the SAP GRC access control and these four are the sub modules of access control and access risk analysis is the most important and the most effective one. This is pretty much what I wanted to cover in this chapter for SAP GRC components. So now I'm going to show you the important transaction codes in the system which will give you a clear picture of the transaction codes which are going to be used in SAP GRC. The first and foremost important transaction code which you are going to use predominantly is NWBC. If you are a GRC consultant or if you are a user or if you belong to the audit team, every each one of us in each one of our activities will be using transaction code NWBC, which stands for NetWeaver Business Client. So when I enter in this, I get into a screen which says Launch NetWeaver Business Client, and you see all these are the different SAP rules which has been given to us by SAP in order to do different activities in SAP GRC system. So I just click on slash NWBC. It, I'm into the SAP business client. These are the work centers, my home work center, setup work center, access management work center, reports and analytics. If you are going to be using GRC system as a security and GRC consultant, then you will be using Access Management Work Center the most. It has access to the Access Risk Analysis module of GRC. It has the mitigated access results, which you can see, access request, access request administration. So as you can see, this is like a complete warehouse for the SAP GRC consultants. So once you are in here, the most important thing which you're going to be using is the access management. Reports and analytics work center is being used by the auditors the most. They have all the reports as it suggests, the analytics, the dashboards, the uh, pictorial representation of your SOD violations. Everything is going to be inside this reports and analytics. Then we have My Home. 
where you can actually see your inbox, what work you have, the different, as you can see, the application help. You have process control, risk management, and access control. You can see your profile here. You can change or reset your password. So this is like a, this is being used by everybody for small things like a requesting a password change or registering a security question to see your approval delegation to and then we will move to the setup work center which has where we define the rules the functions the access risks the rule sets access risks again is repeated so this is all that you do in setup this is also a very very important field for any SAP GRC consultant because this is the building block of any rule R functions you define the functions here in this functions link then you define your access risks you define your rule sets so it's very important again and you have your mitigating controls also here the super user man maintenance which is your firefighter the controllers and the reason codes are also a part of the setup work center so we just saw we came into using we came into this particular screen by using the transaction code nwbc and we saw how important are these work centers for auditors for the grc consultant for grc consultant and my home is applicable to all the people who are using grc in the organization now I'll show you the other transaction codes which are very important in SAP GRC. The easiest way to do a transaction code, because the GRC transaction codes are a little big, not easy to remember. The easiest way I'm going to teach you now is this. We go to, we use the transaction code SE93, which will invoke the, all the transactions. And remember, that 99% of the transaction codes in GRC starts with GRAC. So we can put it as GRAC and an asterisk, which means anything followed of anything that comes after GRAC. And we just click on this button. Yes, we go here. And it is going to tell us all the transaction codes which are being used in SAP GRC. So we have GRAC Act Usage Sync, which is for the action usage synchronization. So whenever you're going to add a new system to your existing GRC system, for example, tomorrow we have a new ERP system, which is also going to be a part of the existing GRC 10 system. So in order to have a complete sync between the two systems, we use this transaction code, which is GRAC Act Usage Sync. Similarly, we have GRAC Alert Generate. We have batch analysis, risk analysis in batch mode. When you have to analyze a lot of risks, you do it in the background in a batch mode. So you do that in the batch array. Then you copy your SOD rules, the rules that have been defined by your organization, by the um, uh, business owners, by your, um, by the auditors, your internal auditors, by, I mean, the, the, all the rules which have been defined, you can copy those rules using GRC, GRAC, which is GRAC copy rules. And we have the data migration. You can see here, GRAC data migration. This is important when you're using a transaction. This transaction code is used when you're actually migrating from an existing GRC solution. For example, when you're migrating from SAP GRAC 5.3 to SAP GRAC 10, you use GRAC data migration. Then you have download the SOD rules, which is GRAC download rules. You have GRAC end user perform CISF, not used much. You have profile sync, because when you create a new role in the ERP system or in the target system, any target system, you actually have to show 
um, you have to sync the profile that has been created using this transaction code, which is GRAC Profile Sync. Then you have another very important thing here, which is GRAC SPM. So whoever will be using SAP GRC solution for uh, your EAM, which is Emergency Access Management, be use the GRAC SPM transaction code for that. So it is very important again. And you have log sync, you have master data sync, and you have workflow synchronization. So basically, these are the transaction codes which, as a GRC consultant, you will be using the most. So I'll just go into one of these roles, uh, I mean, uh, one of these transaction codes and quickly show you how they work. For example, I am taking GRAC SPM. So I just select GRAC SPM from here, I, or I just go here, I just close this one, and I go, go into slash n GRAC underscore SPM, which is this, and I am into the emergency access management. So if the firefighter ID is assigned to that ID, you can see the firefighter ID here. In the next chapters, when we read about uh, firefighter, you will actually know, get to know how it works. But for the time being, you can just remember the transaction codes. Actually, there's no need to remember the transaction codes. You can just go to SC93. You can, in the in the command prompt there in SE93, you can actually go ahead and put GRAC star and all these GRAC related transaction codes you can see from there. So this is all that I wanted to actually cover in this section of important transaction codes for SAP GRC. Thank you. In this session, we will be talking about SAP GRC Access Control Lifecycle. Like any SAP product, SAP GRC Access Control also has a definite life cycle. It starts with the first phase, which is risk recognition, then goes to rule building and validation, analysis, then it goes to remediation, mitigation, and finally, the continuous compliance. We will see what are the objectives of each and every phase of a life cycle of access control. In the risk recognition phase, the authorization risks are identified and we approve the exceptions here. The review of the corporate audit rule set, if your corporate audit, uh, which has happened for your organization, they have come with a rule set that is reviewed. Then we go ahead with a negotiation with the corporate audit in case we cannot get, get rid of certain risks. We have to actually talk to the corporate audits and check what can be done further. So the review, the uh, specification reading, the review, and the classification of risk happens in this phase. For example, the risk will be classified as a high risk if a person who has got the rights to create a vendor also has the rights to actually release a payment to the vendor. This is a high risk system for the entire organization. So this will be record this will be regarded as a high risk scenario. Similarly, we have medium and low risk scenarios. So the risks which are classified, they will then be classified in the risk recognition phase. The risk owners will be identified for each module of SAP which the organization has. For example, we will have uh, the for FICO, for MM, for SD, and so on and so forth. So the risk owners will be identified. And the conditions for monitoring in the future, the terms and conditions will be discussed in this phase. So the risk recognition phase is basically to review, to identify the gaps, to classify the, error, uh, classify the risks, and to clarify the risks with the audit team. The second one here is the rule building and validation. 
After the business risks are identified and classified, technical rules will be established to monitor the risk. Identification of new transactions, standard or custom and authorizations necessary for the threat will be identified and actions will be taken in the next course. So in this one, the business risks after they are identified and classified, technical rules are going to be established. The rules will be validated, the rules will be customized and finally it will be tested. So verify, verification against the test user and role cases will be also done in the rule building phase. So basically this phase which is rule building and validation after the business risks are identified, business risks are classified. In this phase, the rules will be built based on the risk recognition reports that the rule risk recognition reports. The objective of the third and very important phase of access control life cycle is analysis. The objective of this phase is to identify the role and user changes to resolve the violations. So we have to estimate the cleanup efforts here because there are conditions where, where we have seen that for an organization the number of risks of shoot up to almost 1 million. So we have to actually estimate the cleanup efforts very effectively in order to meet the business requirements. So we have to analyze the roles, analyze the users, we have to modify the roles and we also have to modify the rules where the roles cannot be modified because of business restrictions. So it again goes back to the rule building phase if the rules have to be modified during the analysis phase. We have to we have to actually um, run the analytic. We have to actually do the complete analysis phase here. So we have to take the help of the security team, the organization's uh, SAP security team, because they are the people who will be actually dealing with the cleanup efforts and who will be actually cleaning up the system based on the rule build, building, based on the rules and the analytic analytical reports that are run after the rule was built. So this is all which, so the analysis phase is basically for cleaning up, analyzing roles and users and modifying roles and users, modifying the rules based on the analysis. Then comes the remediation phase. The objective of remediation phase is to obtain approval for role modifications to avoid risks within roles. We have to also get the approval for role modification to avoid risks within users. We have to determine the conditions which cannot be corrected by your role or user assignment. We have to document the approval and corrective actions. And finally, we have to modify or create roles or user assignments. Sometimes we have to completely revamp our present authorization design to meet the analytical reports in a better way. We have to completely revamp, we have to completely change the role assignments have to, and we have to completely start from the scratch in order to attain a great remediation phase. After remediation comes mitigation. In mitigation, we have to determine alternative controls to mitigate a risk, a risk which cannot be remediated because of business restrictions, because of manpower um, crunch, or because of any reason which is documented and approved by auditors. We have to actually go ahead and mitigate the risk. Mitigation is kind of, uh, mitigation is a process in which the impact of the risk is lowered down by accepting the risk but accepting the fact that yes we know the risk but we cannot go ahead and remediate it because of so and so reason and that is why we are mitigating the risk so everything is documented 
and mitigation monitors and mitigation controllers are provided for that particular mitigation. And in the process, also during the process, we try to find out if in future how to actually go ahead and control this mitigation, how to go ahead and change the mitigation to remediation if possible. For example, if today we are mitigating a risk due to manpower crunch and if days later we get a user, we get an employee to do that particular job, then the mitigation which was assigned to the user before can be taken off. So mitigation is a process. Mitigation is monitored. Mitigation is actually documented. And we find out continuous ways to remediate instead of mitigating a risk where we can. Finally, we have the continuous compliance. Once everything falls in place, we have risk recognized. We have the rule which has been built, analysis phase done. We have remediated the risk. And whenever we could not remediate with proper business reasons, we have mitigated it. And finally, it comes to the continuous compliance process, which is to communicate changes in roles and user assignments. Uh, in this phase, we simulate changes to roles and users. And we actually use the software AC, which is um, the access control software RAR, to actually see the ongoing risks and how to control the risks and how to do effective testing and control. So this basically talks about the different phases of a GRC access control life cycle. Thank you. This is basically what I wanted to tell you about the SAP GRC access control life cycle. Thank you. Now we'll discuss about the GRC access control interface. I will show you the details inside, inside the GRC system for your better understanding and view. So today's session will be a complete demo session on SAP GRC access control interface. So the transaction code which is most important is NWBC, which is Net Fever Business Client. We enter the transaction code in the command prompt and we just click on enter and we are directed to a new page which says launch NetWeaver business client. And as you can see here, you have different roles from SAP for different purposes in SAP GRC access control module. So you can see we have alerts, we have controller approver, we have a requester, we have GRAC NWBC, which is a very important role to run NWBC. Anybody who is running NWBC should have, be it the business user, the auditors, the consultant, the security consultants, the managers, anybody who has access to the GRC system should have this role assigned to him or her. We have GRAC reports and many other roles assigned to the user using which I have logged in. Hence, I see all these options. I will show you what do I mean and what are the roles here? How are these roles reflected from and where are these roles reflected from? Before that, let's go to NWBC. I go into NWBC, which is my NetWeaver business client. Side by side, I'm going to show you the roles which this user has and why it is able to see. So this is the SU, I came here through SU01. I use this transaction SU01. And for this user ID, because I have logged in using this user ID, I just go here and I check the roles. And as you can see, the user has got SAP BC end user, SAP GRAC access approver, SAP request admin alerts. And these are the roles which are given to the user in the GRC client. And they are reflected. And these roles are getting reflected here. So these roles come, the roles that you see here are given to this user ID in the SU01 role assignment. So that's why you're able to see all these options for this user. So these options can be less for you if you are joining as 
uh, if you're a business user who's going to use GRC as an approver, you will just see the GRC control approver or GRC control owner or monitor depending on what you have. Okay, so now let's go to NWBC and see what exactly it does and how is it important to us. Okay, so this is our NWBC that you see here. And so these are the different work centers in SAP GRC access control. We have master data, rule setup, assessments, my home, setup, access management, so on, reports and analytics, risk structure, risk assessment, report center, risk monitoring, user access, basis functions. So these are the work centers assigned to the user using which I have logged in. It also depends, you will not see all this because everything is restricted on the role basis. If you have joined in only as a GRC consultant with limited access, you will have access to access management because it is going to be the most important thing for you. You have access to master data because here you're going to do uh, certain organization related um, activities. So yes, it will be there for you. You will have rules set up. You will have um, reports and analytics as well, but not the other things that you just saw before. So it depends on the roles which are given to you in the background so that you have access to all this. So now we will see each and every work center in brief and see how they work. So the master data work center and we have organizations. It maintains the company's organization structure for compliance and risk management with related assignments. And it has the regulations and policies. You can just go ahead and check the regulation and positives. It has the business objectives, the control objectives, the mitigation controls, the reports, uh, for policies by regulation, risk reports. So everything is under the master data, which is regarding your policies, regarding your strategies, your policies, the business objectives, the control objectives, so on and so forth. So once we go into each and every link over here, you will be able to see more and more and you will be able to check how it is used in the organization. Then we have another very important one because your basic of a rule structure is defined here. You have access rules, rule maintenance under the rule setup work center, which is very important if you are a GRC consultant because you will be defining your functions here. It will not, if, when you click on that, it will navigate you to the functions tab. And you can actually see the different functions over here and you can edit, create or delete an existing functional function. It's taking a few minutes here because, yeah. So this is a function, which is A00, A001, which belongs to the business process APO. The description has been given. So once you actually go ahead and you want to see this, when you click on open, select the one, click on open, and you will be able to see the different transaction codes which are inside this function and the dis different objects associated to those transaction codes. So yes, you see here, uh, this is the action because uh, a transaction code is called action in GRC. So under action tab, you see the action and the permission is for the authorization object. So this is the permission or authorization object associated with this transaction code or action, which is inside the function module A001, which is for APO supply and demand planning. So you can, you can display, you can create, you can copy, you can delete, or you can generate roles. And you can also mass maintenance of the functions using the rule setup work center. You can go there and you can change, vary, edit, delete whatever is required to do. You have your 
organizational rules you have the generated rules in the organization and the key um, risk indicators are also here so this is one of the very important phases of um, the life cycle of access control the second most important one after the risk recognition we go to rule setup so this is the rule setup we're talking about here then we have assessments where you have surveys manual test plans risk assessments are done policy reports ad hoc everything is here incident management scenarios so we can go into each and every one and we will see how they work so you can just go into manual test plans and see them so this is also important but um, the most important one here is a rule setup my home and your access management is the most important one here so you go to my home under my home you can see your work inbox you can see the approver delegation you can see your profile if you want to actually reset a password you can do it from here you have your request status challenge your names and all that and then you have uh, the process control the risk management access control and all the help side you can see from here so this is a very important one because you can actually go ahead and this is available to all to all the GRC users, be it a business user, an SAP security consultant, or a GRC consultant, you will have all this to help you achieve your objectives in less time. Then you have access management. In access management, we actually go ahead and we see, uh, it is a very important phase here, because in access management, you have the real analysis work is done here. You have user level simulation, you have user level where you can actually go ahead and simulate. For example, I'm going to show you one user level quickly and show you how it works. So I'm going to select my system from here. I'm going to run a user level simulation to see if one of the users is having any SOD violation or not. So I just go here and I selected the system to be EC5 client. And I go here and I give my user as test R. My risk level is all high, medium. So all includes high, medium, critical, low, everything. You have global. You have a detailed summary. I want a format which will be detailed. You can have different formats as it shows. Management, executive, summary, or detail. I want a detailed one, so I'm giving you detail action level and clicking critical action critical permission you have and then because it is just one user I'm going to run it in the foreground and see what happens so basically what we're going to do here is we are actually analyzing the risk for this particular one so test R shows no violations so it shows that the test or the user in this system does not have any violations, but it had an error, it seems. So let's see. So this is how it works. Similarly, you can do for a role level simulation, you can see what happens when you actually go ahead and simulate an error, a transaction code. When you give a transaction code to an existing role, what happens? So all the analysis part happens here. So before actually going ahead and giving a transaction code in a particular role we can actually simulate and see the scenario of what happens whether is there a, is there any SOD violation or if everything is fine then we just go ahead and we assign the in the transaction code to the role access request is here access request creation this part comes from the ARM which is access request management part of GRC then you have role mining which comes from the BRM part of it you have role maintenance scheduling so access management is basically very very important in terms of uh, of a GRC consultant because most of your job is related to this particular work center here similarly we have reports and analytics this is very important for the management very important for audit you have all the um, a list actions and roles so how many transaction codes which transaction code has which role it tells you it gives you a history of transaction code which was last login by whom and every detail is there inside the report and it is mostly used by the management and auditor so you can just see you can give the application name you can give the landscape and 
whether it is for GRC basis, R3 or ECC, and then your role name, what kind of role it is, it is a business role, a composite role, or a derived role, and then finally you can run it in foreground and see what are the transaction codes listed for that role. So it becomes very easy for the auditors because earlier the auditors used to go to the security consultants uh, to get that report, to pull that report out from the system, but right now with the help of GRC, they can just do it on their own. Very important again in terms of in terms of management because you have all the data here, the audit reports, the mitigation control report. So whenever a mitigation control owner wants to see a particular report, instead of going back to his emails to check, he can just come here, log in and see what are the reports and is there any violation or not. Similarly for the super user management, they can also come here and see if there is any conflict for the SOD firefighters, the transaction log reports, so everything is reported here. Then you have um, risk structure which comes from the risk management module, risk assessment again from the risk management module and so basically these are the different work center present in SAP GRC access control. So the so most important one is access management, reports and analytics. Then you have my home is also important. Then you have rule setup, very important, and master data. So everybody, so anybody who has access to GRC, if you're, a G, if you're joining as a GRC consultant, just go ahead and try to get into each of this and see how they work and what is their objective. So this is all which I wanted to, come to cover in this chapter of SAP GRC Access Control Demo.